Good morning, it's Matt here. So today I'm in Reading, Berkshire, and I'm on the A33 coming into Reading from the M4, and I'm going to have a look at some new chargers which have just been installed up here. So this is a new Instavolt rapid charging hub which just opened up here at the Reading Football Club and here they are just here at the entrance. So I'm outside the Reading Football Stadium which is now called the Select Car Leasing Stadium until that sponsorship ends and there is a new Instavolt charging hub here. This only went live two days ago, it was announced on Facebook on the Instavolt page. It's not yet on uh, ZapMap, but I guess by the time you see this video it will be. So there are eight DC rapid chargers here. So how many chargers do you need to call it a hub? When is a collection of chargers a hub? Or do you need a canopy like you have at Milton Keynes or Oxford? But anyway, Instavolt are calling this a hub. I would agree this is a hub because there's quite a few chargers here. So on each of these chargers, you have got both CCS and CHAdeMO. And it's 160 kilowatt on the CCS2 and 62.5 kilowatt on the CHAdeMO. And the pricing as of today, which is the 28th of August, is 75 pence with a pre-authorization value of £30. And like all modern rapid chargers now, you've got a terminal here for contactless payment, um, or you can use the uh, Instavolt app as well. So as I said, there are eight chargers here with obviously eight charging bays, but number six here is out of action already. Apologies, due to an error, the charge station can only dispense a complementary charge of 5 kilowatt hours. Would you like to use this charge? So while it's out of action, they're giving you 5 kilowatt hours. Or do they mean they're going to give you a charging rate of 5 kilowatt, or are they going to give you 5 kilowatt hours in total? Actually, what I might do is I might test that. I might move the car to here and see how much I get. Let's do that. These diagonal bays aren't the easiest when you're on a road like this where cars are coming around the corner. Good job it's quiet today and there aren't too many cars around and you have to reverse in because your charge port's at the back. But anyway, that's a small issue. So let's say yes, I want the complimentary charge. Is that cable going to reach? Yes, it's on a little swinging out boom there. Is that going to swing out? I've never used one of these. Yes, it does. God, these cables are thick and heavy. Oh, no, I didn't take the other bung out. Oh, God. <laughs> these, these cables are a challenge. Doesn't help I'm doing it one-handed and holding a camera. Right, anyway, that's in. Complementary charge available in 146 seconds. It's flashing blue up there. Is that going to start? Still thinking about it. I don't really need a charge. I'm only doing this to test it. Yeah, as you can see, it started and my battery is at 71, or well now 72%. So, time remaining, 34 minutes. It's charging at 25, well, 26 kilowatt. So, yeah, by the looks of it, it is going to give me that five kilowatt hours. Okay, well that's quite handy. Gives me a little top up while I film the rest of this video. So next I'll just talk about parking here because all around this stadium are cameras and car parks where you have to pay and if I look at the Instavolt app 
for this location, not that you can see it now because the sun is too bright, but it says parking charges may apply. But I can confirm that there are no parking charges to charge at this Instavolt hub. This is the entrance road and further down there are all the car parks, the paid car parks, even though there are cameras around up there. This is outside of the parking zones. So, as I said, this is on the A33 as you come into Reading and obviously we're right at the side of the football stadium within the grounds of the stadium. So, quite handy if you're on the M4, however, only uh, four and a half miles down there on the M4 is the Reading Moto Services and both on the um, eastbound on this side and the westbound on the other side there is the new Gridsurf charging hubs and I've done videos on those so if you want to see the one on the westbound side uh, click at the top of the screen and in the video description below and uh, if you want to see the one on the eastbound side again click at the top of the screen and in the video description below. So for most people it's not worth shooting off the M4 to come here because there's more charters now on the M4 at Reading and it's only four, four and a half miles away from here. But if you're leaving Reading and about to get on the M4 going eastbound, so London bound, then it is worth stopping off here because there isn't much going into London on the M4. So this would be a very handy location if you're traveling in that direction. So let's just have a look at these cables because obviously when you've got a CCS connector, they have a much thicker cable because they have more power. And in this case, it's 160 kilowatt. And that is one hell of a chunky cable. And then you've got these metal arms up here, which is taking the weight of the cable because there's quite a loop there because they are long cables, which is great. You want long cables. And then on the Chadamo side, because these are only 62 kilowatt, a much thinner, lighter cable. Again, got the same arm up there looks to be the same cable length but that is a lot more manageable these ccs cables are incredibly heavy and even when it's supported like that they're still very unwieldy things so in my case i reversed in and got pretty close to the bollards there and that was still quite awkward to get that around to this side of the car maybe i should have gone in forward because then the charge port would have been over there and that cable length is probably long enough for the car. Let's have a look. Let's just try this Chadamo. Oh, just noticed that arm swings out double length. Yeah, it's not. That's still not long enough. Look at that. See that arm? Folds in the middle. But yeah, still long, long, not long enough to go to the front of the car. But anyway, you're going to drive up backwards or forwards depending on which end of the car your charge port is to get it as close as possible. And then it's only an issue whether it's on the left or right hand side of the car. And as you can see, mine's on the far side there. And that cable is long enough to reach around the car like that. So yeah, these are nice charges with these supporting arms up there taking away the cable it doesn't necessarily keep it off your vehicle but much better than many of them and then the final thing I'll just mention on seven of the bays the charger is at the end of the bay whereas on this first one it is at the side of the bay so on this one you're not going to get the cable all the way around your car in my case if I'd have reversed up and the charging port was at the back but anyway with this one I would have gone in forward and the charge port will be right next to the CCS cable just there but obviously no bay is really suitable for disabled drivers or drivers with a trailer attached but understandable in a place like this obviously they're short of space this is just on the side of the access road to the stadium here and as you can see there isn't much depth here and they've clawed a little bit back but they haven't got much space to play with and obviously they put it here to keep it out of the controlled and uh, paid car parking areas. I've just noticed the signage up here actually on each one and there is a thing there about parking. Um, please refer to car park signs for terms and conditions but anyway obviously this isn't filled in but uh, yeah. 
I'm 99.9% .9 sure this isn't in a parking zone. Um, that's down there where you've got to go into the car parks and I can see a barrier over there. So yeah, this is all fine here. So I think that's all I can tell you and show you. Oh, my charging's just stopped there. So that was at 4.9 something kilowatt hours. So yeah, I've been given nearly five, well, maybe it did knock up to five, but just under five, there we are, it's got on the screen. I did get five kilowatt hours. So that's very handy. And just as I finished recording as well, God, oh, Jesus, those, those are heavy. And all a bit tight as well. Um, anyway. Right, that will do for this video. If you found it useful, as always, please do click the thumbs up button. That really does help. And if you want to see more videos I've done on the UK infrastructure, charging infrastructure, I'll put a link to a playlist in the video description below where you can see other charging review videos I've made. I'll see you on the next video. And thank you Instavolt for my free top up. Uh, five kilowatt hours in the Ionic at this time of year will get me about 30 miles.